We begin with an exploration of specific concepts in biostatistics. Scales of measurement are the ways that values are defined and categorized. In statistics, there are four scales. Nominal uses numbers to identify an individual or a category. For example, in a study you may code control patients as one and patients with a disease as two. Ordinal Another name for ordinal is rank order, which may either be from first to last or on a scale such as one to ten. Interval this scale represents quantity at specific intervals and may include numbers above and or below zero. For example, temperature is measured on an interval scale. And ratio. Ratio is similar to interval, but it has an absolute zero, that is, all numbers are positive. Now let's review a few key terms you may encounter on the USMLE exam. Distribution. The distribution of a set of numbers is how their values are distributed over a range of possible values. Central tendency refers to the middle value of a data set measured as the mean, median, or mode. Variability measures the amount of spread in a data set using values such as variance and standard deviation. And probability is measured as the likelihood of an event occurring on a scale of 0 to 100 percent. The terms precision and accuracy are often confused so let's take a closer look at the definitions for these two terms. In this context, precision in a test refers to 1. Consistency and reproducibility, that is, the reliability of the test, and 2. The absence of random variation, while accuracy in a test refers to the trueness or validity of the measurement. When discussing error, in a test, random error leads to reduced precision, while systematic error leads to reduced accuracy. Now let's take a look at the ways that data may be distributed. In the normal, or Gaussian, or bell-shaped distribution, the data is symmetrically distributed about the mean value it gives a good description of data that cluster around the mean. For example, the heights of adult American men cluster around the mean value of 70 inches. Most have height near 70 inches, some above, some below, with a smaller number of outliers placed well above or below the mean. A bimodal distribution has two peaks in the probability distribution function. An example of a bimodal distribution is the probability of developing Hodgkin's lymphoma versus the age of incidence. The sample size of a population is defined as n. The standard deviation of a population is defined as sigma and is the square root of its variance. It shows how much variation there is from the mean. In the normal or Gaussian distribution, 68% of the population lies within 1 sigma, 95% of the population lies within 2 sigma, and 99.7% of the population lies within 3 sigma. The standard error of the mean 
SEM, is defined as sigma divided by the square root of n. The standard error of the mean is less than sigma and decreases as the sample size, n, increases. In positive skew, the mean is greater than the median, which is greater than the mode. The right tail is longer, and the distribution is centered on the left. In negative skew, the mean is less than the median, which is less than the mode. The left tail is longer, and the distribution is centered on the right. For case control studies, the odds ratio is defined as the odds of having a disease in an exposed group divided by the odds of having a disease in an unexposed group. If the prevalence of a disease is not too high, the odds ratio gives an approximate relative risk. For cohort studies, relative risk is the relative probability in the exposed group of getting a disease as compared to the unexposed group. It is equal to the percent with the disease in the exposed group divided by the percent with the disease in the unexposed group. The attributable risk is the difference in risk between the exposed and unexposed groups. It is the proportion of disease occurrences that are due to exposure. Now let's take a closer look at statistical tests used to compare data from different populations. The t-test checks whether the means of two groups are statistically different from each other. A t-test is appropriate for comparing the means of two groups. It assumes that the two groups are independent from one another and that the populations in both groups are normally distributed. The student's t-distribution confidence intervals can be used to determine the significance level at which two groups differ. A mnemonic to remember the function of a t-test is Mr. T is mean. On the previous slide, we mentioned confidence interval. A confidence interval gives an estimated range of values which is likely to include an unknown population parameter. Confidence interval is often abbreviated SCI. A confidence level, once selected, determines the probability that the resultant confidence interval will contain the true parameter value. The range of the confidence interval goes from mean minus z times SEM to mean plus z times SEM, where z is chosen to select a given confidence interval. Common confidence levels are 90, 95, and 99%. A 95% confidence level covers 95% of the normal curve, and the probability of observing an event outside the 95% confidence level is less than 0.05. For the 95% confidence interval, P equals 0.05 and Z equals 1.96. The chi-squared test is used most commonly to compare observed data with the expected data from a scientific hypothesis. It checks the difference between two or more percentages or proportions of the outcomes. For example, if a random sample of the population counted 8 of 10 males, that outcome, which is 80% or 0.8 men, would be compared with the expected outcome of 5 of 10 people being men, or 50%, or 0 
Now let's take a look at correlation and covariance. Correlation and covariance both measure similarities between data sets, with both measuring how much two variables change in relation to each other. Correlation is scaled between negative 1 and positive 1, depending on whether the correlation is negative or positive, while covariance ranges from 0 towards positive. The correlation coefficient, r, ranges from minus 1 to plus 1. It compares two variables. The closer r is to the absolute value of 1, the stronger the correlation between the two variables. In the literature, the coefficient of determination, defined as r squared, is the value that is usually reported. We just discussed how the chi-squared test is used to compare observed data with expected data from a scientific hypothesis. There are two essential types of hypotheses, null and alternative. The null hypothesis is a statement that you want to test. It asserts a lack of effect or of difference. For example, the application of drug A does not have any effect on tumor growth. The alternative hypothesis is the one that is compared with the null hypothesis in a statistical test. It is a hypothesis that there is some difference. For example, the application of drug A will lead to decreased tumor growth. When testing hypotheses, there are two types of error that may occur. Type 1 error, which is known as a false positive, occurs when no effect or difference exists, but it is stated that there is an effect or difference. It is the error of rejecting the null hypothesis given that it is actually true. Lowercase p is defined as the probability of making a type 1 error. If p is less than 0 0.05, there is a less than 5% chance of a false positive. Alpha is defined as the proportion of positive test statistics that are really negative events. Type 2 error, also known as a beta error or a false negative, occurs when an effect or difference exists, but it is stated that there is no effect or difference. It is the error of failing to reject the null hypothesis given that the alternative hypothesis is actually true. Beta is defined as the proportion of negative test statistics that are really positive events. Power is defined as 1 minus beta. It is the probability of rejecting the null hypothesis when it is in fact false. As power increases, the chances of a type 2 error decrease. It depends at a minimum on the statistical significance criterion used in the test and the magnitude of the affected effect. It may also depend on the total number of endpoints experienced by the observed population and the difference in compliance between treatment groups. If you increase the sample size, you increase the power and decrease the chance of a type 2 error. A helpful mnemonic is, there is power in numbers.